Welcome to Getting Your Money's Worth, the show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West, and our guest today is Marshall Ulrich, ultra marathoner and author of Running on Empty. Running on Empty, um, Marshall. That says a lot. <laughs> yeah. So tell me something. You were described as an ultra marathoner. What is that? An ultra marathoner is a person who goes beyond the marathon distance. So, you know, it can be 50 kilometers. Traditionally, it's That's more it. like wanna, 100 miles or yeah. so. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. I want to. I want when you talk about a kilometer, I want to translate to miles so that we have make mm -hmm. sure that everyone knows what we are. Right. Okay. So, uh, and in fact, folks say that you're not normal. You're a you're extraordinarily extraordinary. Is, is that a bit description of you? Well, I don't know. It's I, I have been pushing the boundaries of human endurance, and I think that's what I wanted to show to people initially, is that they could do way more than they think they so can. So you're, you're showing the possibility of pushing yourself right. beyond what you think you can do. Right. Uh, I used to have a teacher that said to me, you never know what you can do until you try it. That's exactly right. You know, if you don't try it, how can you know you don't do it? But let's go back a little bit, uh, because um, you had some life-changing events right. that created this uh, hunger in you right. to push yourself. Right. So uh, for one thing, you had a pretty um, hard-working childhood, right? I did, and I think what that taught me was a good work ethic. I worked on the farm, sledding hay, doing things like that. You had a pretty tough taskmaster. Right. You're called your dad. Right. And I think it served me well, and running is not a whole lot different than doing that. It's, it's just a matter a of fact, effort. as a youngster, you worked seven days a week, mm -hmm. and right. you were expected to, right. and you went to school. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so um, from, from the get-go, you uh, what do they call that, a tough grit? You were, you, you were made out of tough stuff. Maybe so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think, I think uh, you know, it proves out. Yeah, I think it, I think well, I think yeah. eventually it does prove that. Okay, so um, you had a tough childhood, and you went on to have a career, what, right. right? Early career. You married your co your high school sweetheart, and um, yes. things and things changed soon after that. You had a, you had a youngster, and then what? You yeah, fell things a, you unraveled. Fell uh, yeah, at 28 years old, she was diagnosed with cancer. My blood pressure went up. And I started running to control the blood but pressure. But you, you were on the you were on the cusp of having cardiovascular disease, right? That's right. right. And what? And why did you pick? Why didn't you just go on a treadmill? Why did you pick running? I think because it was simple and easy, and it would give me some alone time where I could process things in my own head, what was happening to your, me. Your home life was unraveling. Your wife right, was, was sick and got sicker and sicker in a pretty right. narrow window of time. We right. had, and you had a baby, right? Right. So. From the get-go, though, you started running pretty hard. I did. Uh, extended the distances beyond the marathon and into the ultra-marathon distance, and I think it was because I was very troubled, uh, particularly after she passed away. Right. Um, Marshall, when you work out, when you run, and you go, um, do you get some kind of an emotional high? What makes that, what makes that, it, it becomes fulfilling, doesn't it? It does. It, tell, I, tell me a little bit about that. I, I, we're constantly being told that you know certain hormones kick in, but you've you've experienced. So tell me, tell us something about that. Well, I think it's fulfilling in that. It to me, what I like to do is demonstrate to other people that they can do more. On a personal level, there's a feeling of accomplishment when I've done things that other people uh, seemed impossible that they say that you can't do. So you know it's. It's it, it's more about that. It's kind of who I am for the most part. Also, is it is is it is it, is it ego that's driving you? I, I don't believe so. There's I think a little bit of it, maybe, but I don't think so. Uh, within my book, I talk a lot about other people, how the uh, it affected my running affected them. You know, I was I'm brutally honest with with that whole segment. Well, so tell of me, it. tell us yeah. about that. Well, my kids, they they were angry with me for a long time because the running would take me away from them. I see. So that's how it manifested itself and with relationships it just didn't do any good. I was afraid that if I connected with another woman that I would just lose her and so I was afraid. Because I running, was really running, afraid to love again. Running was, running was becoming almost an obsession. Right. right. Yes. Uh, it was the only way that I knew how to cope with it. 
Right. So did you so so not so running didn't really help you cope with your problems it almost created a new set of them for you it, yeah it in, very, some, in some in some way yes it did so, so it did. but you have managed to compensate compensate and you know for two and a half decades i was running but but it came full circle you know there's a love story that's involved there too and my current wife she taught me how to love again uh, but I want to stick. I want to stay on this business of running on empty. What is the empty that you're talking about? An empty life, an empty, an empty body nutritionally. Is it mental? Is it mental empty or physical empty? What is? It's, it is. It's it's mentally. I was running on empty. I I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know where to run to. So I was running away. You were from. running away from something. Right. Correct. Right. But you didn't know what you were running to. Absolutely, that's correct. Yeah, um, we're so uh, taught today. You know, everything's so to run is healthy, to work out is healthy. But you cross that line. Yeah, I think so. Would you Would uh, you say you cross yeah. that line? I mean, sometimes, yes. Right. Have I you gotten so. yourself back? I think so. I still do. You know, some of the same stuff, but I do it how in much, moderation. How, how much do you run now? I probably run about 30 or 40 miles per week at the per most. Week. Well, that's not, I mean, that's not that's so. Any more than I mean, that's, not so, that's not any more than many normal, right. you know, right. normal runners do. Right. Right. No, that's, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And I have other passions, too, as far as sports. Uh, I do a lot of mountaineering also. I, you know, as climbed Everest fact, and well, things yeah. like that. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, when you were um, going through this ultra marathon period, Tell us about some of those. I mean, you ran you you ran up some pretty steep inclines. Right. I, I think I'm best known for this run across Death Valley, which starts at minus 282 feet and it runs to the top of Mount Whitney, which is 14,500 feet. And you do it in the summer, so yeah, it's, it's pretty hot in, through Death Valley. So it's very hot. It's 120. And how do you and how did you maintain and how, how did you maintain your equilibrium or your your own body during that? You, you, you really just have to pay attention to what's happening with your own body and be tuned and make sure that you're hydrated, number one. That's the first thing. And then... So you have someone... Uh, it's crew. They, they go along and... They go along. Right. Yeah. Help replenish the water and food um, anywhere and from you, a mile to two miles distance. Yeah. And do you do that replenishment while you're running? Yes. Yeah. So what do you do? You eat without a fork and a knife? You it, it, well, you take a cup and you just kind of shovel it in or you take a tube of something and squeeze it. So squeeze it in. Mm -hmm. Or just take little bits and pieces, uh, you know, like even a chicken what drumstick. What goes through your mind when you're doing these kind of runs? Well, you know, mostly I'm just monitoring myself. Now I play music, but I, I think about, you well, know, who I am and, and, you know, the person that I want to be. I'm, you know, it's very reflective also. It's very also. reflective and very introspective. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, did you know? I I'm I want to explore this business of. Did you was it did it did it solve your problems? We always say it created many more, but the things that you were running away from did they get solved by running? No, I don't think they got solved. But but what they did, it it allowed me to survive. I basically survived or existed for two and a half decades, and I thought I was living life as it should be lived. You until, thought you were enjoying life. Yeah, yeah, until it came full circle, and now I look back. And I see that you know it was I was I was running on empty. I was a person who uh, was just a shell of what I should be. So you were substitute. We were substituting running for living out. For li loving. Li yeah, and living out the re and living the reality. Oh, right. Yeah. It was, it was kind of an escape for you. Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah, you're probably not the only person that's that, that 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 does that. Do you have you know? Yeah, it 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 can look different for. for it can people. look different for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it could be some sort of an addiction that is uh, very harmful. Well, you know, um, yes, but you know, I, I do think that in general, what I've read about working out and exercising in a different framework perhaps is that in some cases it can be addictive because mm -hmm. your body gets used to a certain kind of rhythm and a certain hormonal. A certain mm -hmm. hormonal. Were you right. under medical care while you were doing this? Did you see doctors? I did just for physicals more than anything else. It, what happened to your body, if anything? Well, if anything, you know, my ability to recover was greatly accelerated, and I was ex in extremely good shape. Wow. And, what, and very what, lean, I see. Yeah, what, what didn't happen is, and I think some of it is genetic, is like my joints and everything, 
withheld or held up very, very well. Valid. Yeah, for some people it doesn't, and I think some of it is genetic. So, yeah, and also, um, uh, I, it, it probably, uh, what, the, the cusp of cardiovascular disease that you were on many years before, that, you know, that went by the way, by the it way. It did, it reduced my blood pressure, so I was able to continue on, and gradually each year it's gone down a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, well, that may be due, that may be due other, to other factors in your life, too. You know, you've found, you found, a, you found a, you found a, your stress levels and you found a habit. Right. So bring us all for it. So you ran on empty for many years, and you did it, you accomplished it, mm -hmm. and that was that period in your life. Right. Now, and that's running on empty. Now you are in a place where you are running, what? More, more for pleasure. More for pleasure. More for and more on and more for to keep yourself trim and more like, you know, for maybe the a little bit more. Aspect too. more and a little bit more than yeah, mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. uh, do you still run marathons? I do. And it's like they have an expo this week. Yes. And I'll be at the expo and, and there's uh, a New York City yeah. marathon. It's and, it's yes. Like, yeah. And so I have opportunity to do those and I'll, I'll and run. And you do those, those kind of and you do those kind Yeah, but I don't I, I don't do it with the intensity that I used to. I do it more for pleasure. And it's right. it's more of a social thing now. And and trying to show that people can do more to stay healthy. Um, you know, obesity is, is Yeah, well we're it's, it's, it's a problem it's in a problem the United on, States. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, it's a big problem, you know, and, and also it's a big problem among youngsters. It is, and yeah. it's, it's not getting any better. And so we, we as parents in particular, have to pay attention to that and set a good example for our children. Right. Is, um, uh, how, how do you go, how do you, for, the, for anyone's really, how do you go from walking to running? I mean, you. I know you were younger, and you. And I, your first week, I read the first week you did what three miles in under twenty minutes or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. well, okay, you're extraordinary. But you've been at this a long time. You know a lot about running. Someone who is walking in a fast one that wants to up the ante. How do you get from walking to running? You just start mixing in a little bit of running gradually. But there's nothing wrong with just walking. You know, there's, that's okay, Walking's too. Walking's okay, too, right? Walking is okay, too. It burns the same amount of calories, essentially, to walk a mile as run a mile. In the fitness, you don't have the impact, either. So there's something to be said for walking. The trick is to just get out the, and do the it. The trick is to just start doing it. Yeah. 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 Um, you wrote this book recently, Running on Empty. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Um, has this, so now, that you got this done, and you're a social runner, and you're having, and you're enjoying life. You're not empty anymore, are you? Why? No, it's my wife taught me how to love again. My current wife, and she was patient with me. So, this run across the United States from San Francisco to New York. You did that in how long? I did it in 52 days. So uh, it that, was that's equivalent. Here. So you did 3,000, 3,063 miles, San Francisco to New York, in 52 days, and right. you, and you were 57. Right. You were 57. How many years ago was this? That was three years ago. In fact, the anniversary is tomorrow, the three-year anniversary. Well, I'll tell I'm you 60 one, now. I want to tell you one thing right now. If you're, if, if you're 60, that running did a lot of good for you. Well, <laughs> because I your, that. Your, Thank uh, you. your appearance belies your age. Anyway, thanks for being on this show. You have a good story, an interesting Thank story. You, and um, I, I will say success in your social running. Thank okay. you. You're watching Getting Your Money's Worth. I'm Judith West. Judith West, I can't my name. I was so taken in with 3,000 miles, 52 days, 57 years, running on empty. Thanks for watching.